Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. It's a great time to be here and to share with you amazing tips and tricks in Python programming language. And so this year we come your way with very wonderful lessons and tutorials, and this will be based predominantly on the comments and questions we receive. And so we start today's episode with one that we received, which has to do with finding or estimating the consecutive number of dry days or consecutive number of wet days in a particular data set. And so um, this is what we'll try to address. This time not using any um, defined, let's say, predefined data sets, but rather we have our own array we've created and we are going to use just basic um, Python functionality to try and estimate the consecutive number of dry days or wet days. And so let's say we have this variable P containing lots and lots of data points, which would be representation of rainfall. Okay, let's just make it RR to represent the rainfall. And so we start off with our function. So let's define a function called cumulative. And we would need in here a dummy variable, say x, and then the threshold, which we can define a, we can give a first value, or we can leave it as just stress. Okay, so I want to leave this by default as the one millimeter threshold, right? And so from here, what we need to do is to create variables that would contain or others that would be the counters. So let's say we have a count initialized to zero. We have an overall counter. Um, we create a blank list. And then we also have an iterator, which will help us look through the data set, the i set to zero. And then we make use of the while loop here. So while i is less than the length of uh, x. So while i is less than the length of x, what we need to do is um, let's just keep our increment here. So now we know that i will be increasing. So what we are going to do is to compare. So first we have if the x at point i, for instance, is less than the threshold, then it means we are going to increase the counter. So count plus equals to one. And the final alternative is if it doesn't meet this, then it means we would have to reinitialize this back to zero to start the whole count process. But before we initialize, we want to make sure we append whatever value we had at the final point of the count to the overall counter. So we have overall counter dot append, and we append the count. Now, there's also what we would need to do for the final step. So for instance, if i is equal to the length of x minus 1, which is at the very final point, um, what would happen is if the final point sort of doesn't initialize to zero, if it doesn't, if it doesn't meet the criteria, as in the alternative criteria, then it means it would only have the count increase but not appended back. So what we are trying to do is at the very final phase, uh, we would want to reappend again. So overall counter dot append, then we append the count, right? So knowing well that we can do this here, we can equally just cut it out and paste it beneath so that it would be once the count is met, that's okay. But if we are not the last end, then we are going to be increasing the counts and counts. But when we are the last end, we increase the counts and we add it back. Okay. And so this is purely for the dry case. That's where we have the less than. So let's include the comments. So consecutive dry days. And then we would also want to have one for the wet days. So rather than rewriting or reinventing the wheel, we can just pass in here the cumulative type as a variable. And we can give it a default of say CDD, 
and this one use just a string. So before we even compare, we can have over here. So if the cumulative type is CDD, then this whole step should be executed beneath it. However, if the cumulative type is CWD, there's a consecutive word case, then we are going to have the same information down there. This time this for the word days. And with the word days, we are looking at greater or equal to the threshold. And then every other thing stays intact. So what we have done, we have the overall finally containing, I mean, a list of different counters. Okay. So what we would want to print out is just a maximum count within all the overall counters. So we can have the max of the overall counter. Okay, and that's what we are going to return. We we'll return this as an overall counter. Exactly, and that's all. And that's purely a cumulative function. So we want to execute this function now on the rainfall. So it's calling our cumulative on the data, which is RR, and then the threshold, let's use one, and then our cumulative type. Say CDD, and it gives us seven. And so when we go back to the data, and we want to test it out and see. So by cumulative, I mean by consecutive dry days, you're looking at the ones less than the threshold we set. So these first parts do not all set to true, but it starts from here. Okay, so from here it starts counting one, two, three, four, five. There's still less than one, six and then seven. So after this point, the one makes it invalid, so it goes back to zero, all right? And then this, the other end, which would have met the criteria is just three points, so one, two, three. So the largest amongst them, in terms of the largest consecutive would be the seven. And so that's why we have seven printed out. Now, if we rerun this with the consecutive word date, with the criteria we set, then we have 14. And so what days are greater or equal to the threshold? So we have here been met. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then this whole part doesn't evaluate. And from there we have here one, nothing, and then one. So the highest amongst them is the 14. And so there's the number of cumulative I mean, there are a number of consecutive. Okay, sorry, I think maybe because I passed in here cumulative, that's why. So you should rather, let's use a function name of consecutive. And that would be better. And so you're looking at the number of consecutive by days. The number of consecutive with days. And Okay, I need to run the function first. And then that's where we, I mean, that's what we have here, finally. Okay, and so this is how you build a consecutive function. Okay, for consecutive dry days, consecutive wet days, whichever one uh, you would want to make use of, it's quite easy with the same approach, right? So thanks for joining in. I believe you learned a lot and we'll come your way next time with a different one this time working with the tabular data not just an array working with the tabular data and then how to make this functional on the tabular data and in the one that follows we'll then look at how to do say using a multi-dimensional data for instance a net cdf data set and this purely where our meteorology and you know the various climate sciences come in all right. So thanks and do enjoy the new year and see you again. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, turn on post notification, and then get informed whenever we put something new up there. 
we look to increase our base and to help people understand and improve the Python language. So we would like to get your questions, your comments, your critiques and the rest. So do well to keep connected and then send them to us. Like the video, don't forget to share within your network and have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.